Welcome once again to my class. Today, as we continue our lesson on computer literacy, today we are going to talk about the anatomy and also the block diagram of a computer. So I'm going to start sharing my screen with you using the slides that are personally prepared so that you can really appreciate it. So today, as I have already indicated, we are going to talk about the anatomy and also the block diagram of a computer. So to start with, we have to want to talk about the basic structure of a computer. The computer receives input, processes it, and delivers the process uh, input as output. And to perform these tasks, the computer has different units and each unit is also responsible for a particular task or a specific task. The unit of the computer, uh, we have the input unit, the memory unit, the control unit, the arithmetic and logic unit, also known as the ALU and also the output unit. The control unit and also the ALU together are called the central processing unit. So basically the central processing unit consists of the control unit and also the arithmetic and logic unit. Now let's talk about the input device. There are devices that are used to transfer data from the user, in this case, from the real world to the computer system. And examples are the keyboard, the mouse, the camera, the scanner, the joystick, the microphone, the optical marker recognition, the the barcode readers, they are examples of input devices. Now, another type of device or another uh, important device with respect to the computer system is also the output device. It is used to transfer process information from the computer to the user in a way required by the user. In the sense that if the user wants to see it visually without touching it, the user will use a, some, a, an output device like a projector or a monitor. If the user also wants to, I mean, uh, use uh, like print and hold it or have a hard copy of it, the user will use something like a printer. So an output device is used to transfer process information from the computer to the user in a way required by the user. Let's also talk about another important unit within the computer system, that is the memory unit. The memory unit stores instructions and data and provides them to the various unit and provide them to the various other units as and when they require. For example, if the computer is processing the data, the data will first be kept in memory. And as and when the computer wants to work or deal with the data, he will go in for it. So it is basically the working memory of the computer system. This memory unit is volatile, that is, those that are temporary normally known as the RAM. So the RAM is a typical example of a volatile memory unit of the computer system. It is temporary memory and nothing can be stored here permanently. The information is stored in the main memory as long as, long as the computer is switched on or as long as it is required by the computer. And let's talk about the control unit. The control unit controls the name implies it controls the various operations within the computer system. It, it basically manages all the other units and devices of the computer system. It does so by transmitting timing and also control signals to the various devices and units. We also have the arithmetic and logic unit. We also have the arithmetic and logic unit. which perform the various arithmetic and logical operations on the data stored in memory as, as detected by the computer. There are various basic circuits to perform these operations. So something like add, 
the addition, multiplication, division, and those stuffs are being done by the arithmetic and also the logic unit. Something like compare, that is normally the two state operation done by the computer is also done by this operation. So the arithmetic aspect is also the plus, the minus, the multiplication, the division, and also the logical maybe compare two things, whether this one is greater than this, true or false, those stuff are also the logic aspect of the computer. We have what we call the sto a sto a secondary storage. The secondary storage stores the various data, information, and also programs permanently for future retrieval and also use. The information is normally organized in, in such a way as to retrieve it in minimum time whenever they require. The stored information remains as long as the user wants it. Now let's look at the, bo the block diagram of a computer. The computer basically consists of uh, three main stages or three main unit or devices. And uh, there is another one added to it, that is the secondary storage. So we have the input stage, the processing stage, and also the output stage. And the various devices that are used at each stage help gives us the device. So we have the input stage and the devices used at the, used at the input stage is the input device. The processing stage is, the devices used at the processing stage is also the processing, uh, the processing device or the processor device. And also the output stage is all, uh, the device used at the output stage is also the output devices. So this is the block diagram of a computer. So we have the data flow. In between the input device and also the processor device, and also in between the processor device and also the, out, uh, the output device, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a single arrow. But in between the secondary storage and also the processor device, it's a bidirectional arrow, meaning that data can be sent into the storage device and data, the storage device that can also send data to the processing device. So that is this is basically the operation of the computer system. That's the block diagram of a computer. And uh, we, 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 are, we have this in a form of a cycle. That is data from the output. That is a, a process data, which is information can be sent back into the input device for future use. So in one way or the other, it is in a form of a cycle. So this is the block diagram of a computer. When you ask to talk about the block diagram of a computer, this is a simple diagram that you can use to explain it using the concept. And at each state, a particular device is used. For example, at the input stage, the devices used is called the input device. And the typical examples of these input devices are keyboard, mouse, scanner, camera, microphone, joystick, and others. And now the processing state, that is the processing device, the main processing device used by the computer system is the processor or the central processing unit, which is normally housed by the system unit or the system chassis. Don't confuse yourself with the difference between the processor or the CPU and the system unit. The system unit normally contains the CPU or the processor or the, so the, the system unit is equal to the system chassis. When you're asked to talk about uh, the main processor, please don't mention C, uh, the, the system unit. The system unit is, is in one word or the other, is the container that houses the, the processor and other important components by the computer such as maybe the various cables, the hard drive, the RAM, that is the memory that is used by the computer. So know the difference between the system unit and also your processor. The device used at the output stage is the output device. And a typical example, the most popular one is the monitor, the, prot uh, the plotter, the projector, the speaker, the printer, and others. There are examples of uh, output devices. And the device used for storage of the data it's also called the, sto the, the storage device or the secondary storage devices. And examples are the, the pen drives, the floppy disk drive, the diskette, the disk drive, and others. So these are all examples of uh, secondary storage devices. Now let's look at data representation within a computer system. Data is normally represented in the computer system using character. So a character is the sm smallest amount of information that can be communicated to the computer. So all the various data and information instructions are represented by a combination of these characters. The, all the alphabet, the digits, the symbols are also characters. Even a blank space or a space bar is also a character. How does the computer understand a character? A computer being an electronic device can only represent 
uh, uh, data in only two stages. That is the voltage and non-voltage. That is the plus and minus, the on and off, the negative and also the positive, the one or the zeros. The voltage is normally represented as one and no voltage is also represented as zero. So for example, when you see a character like this, a character in terms of its representation that using the voltage is what we normally call the binary operations or the binary numerals. Uh, in, in secondary school, you know uh, the conversion of uh, uh, these 10 numbers to these two, that's the binary. So a series of such zeros and ones form a pattern and such a pattern becomes a character. So for each character, a separate pattern is there, is, is there within the computer. Basically, there are eight of such positions to represent the zeros, the various characters, that is the zeros and ones. So when it is one, it becomes a bit. So bit happens to be the smallest form of uh, representing data within the computer system. But when you have uh, eight bits, it becomes a byte. When you have eight bits, it becomes a byte. So there are eight such positions to represent zero or one, and each pos such position is called a byte. Hence the pattern generated, hence the pattern generated to represent a character is a bit pattern. So when you have a bit in the form of eight, it becomes a byte. And as you can see on the screen, we have the number one here, which is representing a byte. The zero here is a byte. There. So when they are in a, in, in a combination of eight, they become a, a, a byte. So the bit, a combination of eight bit gives us a byte. So two digit zeros and ones can generate 256 unique combinations if represented in eight places. Hence, we can represent 256 different characters in any computer system. We also have what we call the ASCII. That is the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Normally, it's difficult for us to remember all the 256 bit patterns and their corresponding characters. Hence, we can convert the bit pattern to a decimal number. This way, each bit pattern will have a different number. And this number, fixed for a character, is called the ASCII code of the character. All computers follow the same ASCII code and bit pattern to represent these characters. The binary, what, are, what I've already mentioned, is, uh, involves two digits, that is zero and one, that is called is bi, binary. By using this system, a bit pattern that is normally treated as a binary number can be converted to the, the, to the decimal number. So for example, the number 58, within a computer system, the computer doesn't know that you have represented or you have inputted 57, but the computer will see it in the form of the zeros and one, that's zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one. What you know, that is when you convert the 57 to base two, you are going to get that representation. So the 57 within the computer system is being represented as 00111001. That is the number 57. So starting from the right to the left, raised to the raised two to the power of zero to seven. So this is what we normally do when you were in secondary school and you were doing a number basis. You convert from base two, uh, base uh, 10 to base two. This is also 185, meaning the number 185, when you represent it, when the computer system sees it, you see it as 10111001. Put one to the same thing, 255 to the same thing. And this is also how zero is also represented. One important thing that you must know it, whether the number is up to zero bit or not, when it is up to zero, when it is less than zero bit, you have to add zeros. You have to add additional zeros to the front of the numbers to form the the, uh, the the eight byte. So to get the the characters eight bit to get the byte, even if the conversion is not is not up to eight, you add zeros to it in front. Now let's look at some of the bit pattern, the ASCII code, and also their character. So for example, when you see the number six five, this is the bit pattern. This is the bit pattern of this the number sixty five, and the ASCII code. Uh, the character is representing A. So the ASCII code for uh, the, the character A is 65. Bear in mind that the, in, in terms of computing, case, uh, cases are very, very sensitive. That is, we have case sensitive. The character small A is different from the character big A. That is why the ASCII code for the character uh, big A is 65, and that of the smaller A is 97. So you, you, you have differences. This is the, uh, the blank space. 
take the ground speed and the ASCII code for the ground speed is, is 32. You have the minus and the rest. So there are numbers. There are a lot of them you can read about them. So we did the computer system. For example, if this is your data, you have something like the sun here, you have the ABC, the one, two, three box. Within the computer system, the computer doesn't see that this is sun. It will convert whatever you see here. That's the real world data. The data that you, the user, you can see, it is meaning to you. When the computer sees it, it will see it in these numbers or in this character, that is in the form of binary, in the form of binary. So this representation here, this real world data here within the computer system will be represented as this. Now let's look at the unit for measurement of information. As I've already indicated, eight bits will give us one character, which is called one byte. And 1024 bytes will give us one kilobyte. And 1024 kilobytes will give us one megabyte. And 1024 megabytes will give us one gigabyte. And 1024 gigabytes will give us one terabyte. So this is the representation of data or the, the unit of measurement of information within the computer system. One thing that we must bear in mind is that the basic unit of measurement or the smallest unit of measurement for a computer system is byte. And eight byte will give us one byte. Eight bit is byte, eight bit, and eight byte, eight bit will give us one byte. Thank you for uh, watching today's lesson. Please share the videos and make sure you watch it and enjoy the class. Thank you.